Arne Hins is a lecturer at the Cardiff School of Journalism, Media and Cultural Studies and is the director of MA Journalism, Media and Communications and MA Digital Media and Society. His research connects communication policy, media activism, citizen media, globalization and technological change. What do you think is the relevance and purpose of community media today uh, in today's changing media landscape? Well, it seems it's a, it's a growing relevance as it is also recognized by, by governments, by international institutions more and more in many parts of the world. It's becoming officially, or community broadcasting at least, becoming officially the third uh, media sector and in addition to commercial and public service broadcasting. So that shows a little bit its relevance. But also beyond that, I think um, as, as media to, for, yeah, as local media particularly in, in situations when big media companies are kind of abandoning a little bit the local markets and are closing down local newspapers and so on, it is very important. Um, as, as media, of course, as participatory media forms uh, that allows people to give, to, to, to raise their voices and to give their opinions and to participate in the creation of information and knowledge and sharing knowledge. In all these ways, I think on a grassroots level, also on an institutional level, it seems to become more and more important, yes. Right. Um, also drawing from our conference's theme, which is the region, how do you think a community media presents itself in your region? In my region, um, yeah, that's that's interesting because there is um, because of the local focus of a lot of uh, community media in the region where I live, which is let's say it's Wales, it's a part of the United Kingdom, it's a part of Great Britain. Um, there are now fewer newspapers, like some of them have closed down, um, and. Therefore, then a lot of new local newspapers, hyper-local media are starting. There are a certain form of community media. They're not all non-profit. Some of them are also small businesses. We've also had some, some discussions here about that in a, in a session just now. Um, but so new community media like forms of media are, are emerging there. I think it's interesting to think about community media in terms of uh, regional media, in terms of media that also go beyond the local or beyond the classic national space, uh, because we're talking often about communities that are transcending localities, that are connecting different localities, sometimes even diaspora communities between countries, but also between localities from village to village, sharing content and sharing uh, skills and so on. So it's, I think it's interesting to think of community media as something that goes beyond the classic notions of space. And in, there, in that sense, it can help us maybe also reevaluate these classic understandings of space. Right. Um, talking of community media, what do you think are the challenges uh, for practitioners and policy makers working in this ambit today? The, the challenges in, in working together or for, for them separately? Uh, either way, either yes, way. yeah. In terms of approaching policy uh, and for practitioners as, uh, you know, in terms of everyday experiences, what mm. do you think are the key challenges? Yeah. If you could draw from your region. <laughs> I've been like, I guess academically, I've been looking particularly at the policy side and, and the, the development of policy in different parts of the world, the creation of new laws and regulations. And a lot, as I said already, a lot is happening there, a lot of new laws and regulations that enable community media, which is uh, good and interesting, but often, well, in many cases, these laws don't, they, they provide a certain form a certain type of new um, en enabling environment but there are limitations often in terms of the uh, the scope in terms of like for example for community media the transmission uh, power that is that is allowed the fact that often there are no uh, the public there's very little or no public funding We're talking often about of course about non-profit media when we talk about community media we're talking about uh, NGOs that are uh, or local groups that are creating media and so they need resources from somewhere and they need public resources and often these public resources are not there 
there, so there are all these limitations even when there are laws and regulations in place. Right. Um, for <coughs> practitioners it is certainly a challenge to act within this difficult framework of having limited resources. At the same time also I guess the question of um, when resources are coming in, for example through advertising or through institutional funding, what does that do? Does that change anything uh, of the, the local media, of the community media organization? Does it transfer, does it transform it into something that is not anymore community media? And that is certainly, certainly a challenge, I think. Right, in this entire framework, what do you think is the role of the state, especially in the light of uh, globalization and corporatization and media consolidation? What do you think is the role of the state today in advancing community media? That's a big question and, and um, the role of the state of course is the question that everybody is kind of asking themselves about what, uh, what are we, what, what, what is it, what is, what is happening about it. In terms of community media certainly um, it has been interesting I think to look at uh, some countries, some governments in Latin America and some other places. Uh, that have um, created new laws and regulations for community media, allowed them to uh, to exist legally, uh, created a space for them as a third uh, type of the third media sector, and so to create a legal possibility for community media to exist. First of all, that is something that the spa that the state can do to um, create the opportunity for uh, yeah for also. For, for frequencies, for example, to be um, to be allocated to community media, to non-profit media, um, to create other, to create an, an enabling environment more generally, to provide public funding. I already talked about that that challenge, and um, yeah, these kind of things. Right. Sure. <laughs> um, also, just to give you a background about India, mm. uh, news in India is uh, banned on private and community uh, radio. We're talking about radio here. Mm. How important do you think news is uh, to, uh, a med uh, to platforms like community media and specifically community radio? Yeah, the qu in, in some way everything can be news, right? And it's probably very difficult to, uh, to distinguish what is news and what is not news. A lot of what well, traditionally community media is not just about music and is not about... Um, well, sometimes even when it's about news, music, there is a message connected to the music. Maybe it is kind of in a local language, maybe it, is, uh, it has a certain form of content. But uh, there's a lot of spoken word in, in community media, community radio traditionally. There are, there have to be documentaries, there has, there have to, there has to be news in a way. And uh, so to have community media without news is very unfortunate, it's very strange in a way. So it uh, should be about providing information, but it should also be about allowing citizens to contribute their own information. And so it is necessarily a form of, of news. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. And uh, how imminent do you think a digitization is? Uh, and how do you think it will impact community media uh, in the entire uh, yes. media landscape? Well, the, the digitization is a big big topic right now, I think. And, and there are different forms, of course, of dif digitization that we can talk about. One is the, uh, the digitization of, of, of the radio spectrum, of, of radio as such. And that can be a big challenge for community radios in some countries, like in the UK where I live right now. There have been debates for the past few years about uh, changing all radio from uh, classic FM transmission to digital transmission. And uh, just now they've uh, set a new deadline, which is I think in like five years or so from now. That involves some challenges with regards to funding, again to resource it, it, it might be expensive to move to to digital transmission uh, it also depends a little bit on the on the on the type of digital transmission that is that is chosen for example i think dab the the is the platform that is often at least in europe that is uh, most widely used and that may provide uh, problems for community radio because i think it is it works through uh, a certain uh, How do, how do we put it? Certain platforms where where um, uh, different radio stations are bundled, and so it would be very. It may become difficult for um, local stations, for example, to really only broadcast locally. 
um, when they are bundled together with other stations right. and so on. Uh, so there are these kind of uh, challenges with regards to moving to digital platforms. Uh, there is a broader question, of course, of like, what about the internet? What about online transmission that can allow a lot of uh, new possibilities for community radios? And it is possible to transmit freely or to, to stream uh, over the internet um, freely. And that allows a lot of possibilities. Um, but then we also see, of course, different dis different forms of media uses emerging on the internet and with social media, more individualized forms of media use, more individualized forms of media production um, that might not always be the same as the classic, understand more collective understandings of community radio. So these are big questions. What happens um, as we are moving towards internet uses and perhaps towards more individualized media uses and media production? What does that mean for collective forms of community radio and I think we're still in the process of figuring that out and seeing what's happening. That's an interesting process I think but it's definitely something that scholars and practitioners have to think about and I think it's also good that we're talking about this a little bit here in some sessions at this yeah. at this conference because that's that's a big challenge. Right. Thank you so much. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, thank you.